everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, G-A-R-Y, they, Nur, Chuck, and as you know, I'm on vacay. Now hopefully I'm emailing you guys back because of course that's what I like to do when I'm on vacation. I know you're pounding me with those emails, so I appreciate the love. But I'm not here, but I'm gonna send you to another classic episode. And this episode that you're going to is episode 44. And why 44? I don't know, just in the mood for fours today. So check this out, sit back, relax, because you and a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, aren't we? Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. Today we're gonna do three random wines and see what they taste like. You know, just a little hodgepodge, no theme oriented, just three wines that I kinda wanted to taste for myself and, uh, and uh, well, let's see what they do. So, let's get right into it. First wine is the 2002 Chateau Valro Cuvée Allion, which is a Saint Estef, and right next to, door to uh, Côte Renal. I first found out about this wine in the 2000 vintage, when it scored 92 or 93 points in the Wine Spectator, and I'd never heard of it before. And so I started doing my homework, and sure enough, we uh, we we found some. Um, it's a it's a very dark wine, as you can see, um, Cabernet Merlot based. I don't know the exact breakdown, but we'll find that out and post it on the uh, website later. Um, so let's see, I mean, I've once already tasted this and scored it for the website, so when you click the link, you will see I scored it a 91 the first time. I needed to retaste this because when I had it, it was about six to eight months ago in Bordeaux, and it was a really nice dinner, and we were whining and dining, and it was kind of like, you know, I was trying to make sure that my score's on par. It wasn't just the experience. And that's what happens a lot. If you've ever noticed that you think the wines in Italy from the buckets are awesome, it's mainly because you're with loved ones, you're relaxed, and you're enjoying yourself. And ambiance and atmosphere has a huge amount of impact on wine tasting. So just keep that in mind. Great floral nose. I'm really surprised by the color, actually. I, I didn't remember it being this dark. Still really tight tannins. A little bit more closed than I remember it. Really nice oak, melted in kind of a little bit with a little bit of cherry. A little cassis flavors as well. Classic Bordeaux Cabernet style flavors. Big nose, real, real powerful nose of coffee. It's just really obvious actually. A little bit of Starbucks dancing in this nose. This is a very nice wine. It's a little bit tight on the finish and a little bit too dry. I think I'm gonna peg it down a notch to 90 points maybe. I might even update the review because I wouldn't call this a 91 point wine. But I would say this is easy a 90 point wine. And again, I believe this is 1999, which is a steal. The O2 vintage in Bordeaux is not classic, but very drinkable. So if you're looking for a great everyday drinking red wine in that $20 range, and, and again, that's not an everyday price point, but again, I mean like, high quality wine that you can drink with dinner that's not going to break the bank. This is a great choice. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of this wine. This is baby Cote Estrenal to me for a fifth of the price. So this is a real bargain and a real quality wine. Again, just a little bit dry. So if you're worried about dryness, that's something to keep in mind. Alto Moncayo, 2002. 100% Grenache, made by Chris Ringland who's one of the great winemakers in the world. Big wine, big bottle, heavy glass. I will be leaving for Spain next Thursday, the 18th through the 30th. We will be taping a lot of footage that we hope to use on Wine Library TV. I'm not sure about the internet connections because we're gonna be all over, all over Spain. So uh, what I'm probably gonna do next week is go through one uh, power day of taping a lot of episodes so you're not left with a two week gap. So if I wear the same shirt in several episodes in a row, don't blame me. So let's get into this. Again, 100% Grenache, 15.5 alcohol. So, you know, who needs vodka, right? So let's see. Interesting nose. This wine's received a big, big Parker score. I can't remember right now, but I, I think it's 93 points. Big nose, very awkward, kind of um, eucalyptus on the nose. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, very minty and eucalyptus, kind of, you know, what you would want to put on your iced tea in the summer, which is very awkward for a red wine, but interesting. Wow. The mouth.
mouthfeel is incredible. Really silky on the palate, really explosive. Really bright fruits, really exotic fruits for a red wine. I almost get even apricot flavor, which is much more of a white wine flavor. Yeah, really bright aromatic fruit, a little bit of Asian spice. Really terrific, just a terrific kind of little hint of oak. I mean, this is a really complex wine. Yeah, powerful strawberries. Just really well made. Very, you can see I'm kind of squinting and thinking. It's because the wine is very tightly wound. It's very young still. But again, this will open up to be a monster. It reminds me of some of the top Chateau of the Pops I've had this year. Um, this has incredible potential. I don't know if I'd go as high as 93, but this is easy a 92 or 91 plus kind of wine, which is a great score for a wine under $40, which this is. Big, 15.5, don't forget, but great with steak, would go great with anything complex, food like that. So, finally, I've been saving this baby for last. I've been dying to try this. This is the 2004 Marquis Phillips S2 Cabernet. This wine has had a tremendously illustrious career. You know, it's gotten some of the big Parker scores, 96, 95, 90, big scores. Just always been a wine that was very sought after. The first couple of years it came out, it would like fly off the shelves. I mean, just like one day type stuff. Um, it's gotten a little bit more calm. I think the scores have been a little bit lower. But again, the Marquis Phillips has always made just great, great wines. Sparky Marquis and Dan Phillips winemaker and importer created this brand. I'm not sure if they're still doing it together. I've heard some rumors, but um, the wine in 04 should be fantastic. I've not had it yet, but I'm excited to do so. So, save maybe the best for last. Or not. Let me just retaste this real quick, but I'm stunned at the bell pepper kind of green aspect that you don't expect from this wine. Wow. It's funny because when I paged down for this, I was excited to try it. And I was really expecting it to show really well. But I have to tell you, a little bit of mix of green vegetable flavors, kind of a, almost like a fake cream oak flavor, almost like buttered pop, wow, buttered popcorn really coming in on the finish, which is kind of a nice little flavor, but not what you're looking for in a serious red wine. This wine is all over the place. The mouthfeel is great. It's really silky smooth on the palate, but I got to tell you, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this wine. Yeah, it's, it's been open for, you know, a couple hours. Again, not corked. I know a lot of times people ask me, are you sure it's not corked? I promise you it's not. We've pulled many bottles off the table. And again, the last time I did it, I said, you know what, we're going to save this for an episode. So we will do an episode on corked wine and maybe show you a better way to find corked wine. But I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to pan the S2. It's just, just not really great. Maybe an 86, 85. Not, not feeling it. Now I'm going to have to figure out what to do with our 15 cases in stock. Anyway, great, great episode. Uh, 92, 90, 86, great wines. The Valro, I would definitely seek out. Inexpensive, high-quality Bordeaux is very difficult to find. This is kind of an undiscovered, unknown Bordeaux producer. I would highly recommend you try them out. I mean, a lot of people know what this is, and a lot of people know what this is, and I've got to tell you, it just didn't do it for me today. Hope you enjoyed today's episode, and we'll see you next time on Wild Library TV.